Of all toys, action figures tend to be one of those made up of the most number of parts. Well, especially because of all the articulation. It's a direct correlation. The more articulation a toy has, an action figure, a doll, a giant stuffed bunny rabbit, the more it's going to cost and the more pieces you're going to need. Because every piece that's articulated is a separate piece that needs to be assembled. One of the ways companies find to cost-reduce figures is to remove articulation. It's why you saw things like the five points of articulation Star Wars figures a few years ago, or the new Marvel four-inch figures from quote-unquote Kenner. Of course, then you can get something like a slug figure, well, a smurf figure, <laughs> these are called slugs, non-articulated figures, which have the least number of parts. So of all the parts on an action figure, why make a video about action figure heads? Well, it's because action figure heads get you more, more for your buck, more for your, your, your energy, your value, than any other piece of the figure. And there's a few different interesting reasons why, and I have some thoughts on how the toy industry can continue to maximize this. So a head sculpt for an action figure that requires a head sculpt, meaning there's no mass score, you know, it's not like a Lego, this is called a portrait. It's a special skill set that different action figure sculptors have. Some are just body sculptors, but others are really, really good portrait sculptors. And there are some portraits out there that look just dead on to the talent now. It's pretty amazing how far technology has come and how good sculptors have gotten. You're really getting a handcrafted piece of art now when you're getting an action figure. Older action figures, especially from the 70s and 80s, didn't really have sculpts or portrait sculpts. They just had sort of generic heads. Things like Legos are also a good example of this. I actually did a whole video about toys that don't need likeness rights that get around this. You can check out the video at the end. I'll link it in the, uh, the closing uh, image. So what is it about heads that gets so much value? Why are they different from any other part, from even a cool accessory? Sometimes an accessory can sell a figure, right? If you have a figure you've bought before and it comes with something new. Well, yes, action figure accessories are awesome. They're great for dioramas. They're great for play value. They're great for, you know, just having figures in funny or serious poses. Figures are coming with more and more accessories every year, and we're starting to see things like other body parts becoming accessories, like other hands, alternate ways to grip things as opposed to putting the articulation in the wrist. And there's other ways to get action figure accessories too. One of my favorite is super action stuff. You can get these on Amazon. It's really cool. There's like lots of funny things and blast effects, even blood and gore effects that can really take a diorama to the next level. So yeah, action figure accessories, all for them. And I'm not saying heads are more important, but as we start to see more and more action figures coming packed with alternate heads as one of the accessories, I applaud this because, as I said, you get so much more value from a head versus any other accessory, a hand, a blast effect, a gun or sword, etc., etc. And there are specific reasons why, and since so many action figures have to get cost reduced, keeping the head becomes more and more important. And this probably means that if you're like me, you probably now have a giant bag full of unused heads. And while that might be a consequence, hey, I also, like you, probably have a bag of unused laser weapons or unused fisto action figures or unused swords and blades and sharp things. I tend to categorize like that. So of all these types of value that can get added, why is it that heads specifically have so much more value to an action figure? Well, the head obviously is where all of the personality comes from. A good head, head excuse me, let's start over. A good head sculpt, see, I can talk today, it has character. It, 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 it emotes who the character or personality talent is supposed to be. Of course, a bad head sculpt can also be an issue too, and that can cause problems. So there's three things that a head sculpt can do that no other, wait, actually, no, wait, there's four things that a head sculpt could do that no other part can. One, it makes it easier to refresh a figure for reissue. Yes, you can repaint a figure like these two gambits, but you can see the, the uh, reissue on the left also got a new head sculpt, and a simple new head sculpt can make a figure look entirely new. Sure, paint can help, but a head sculpt goes really, really far as far as making a figure feel different. It can also, a second thing, 
give a character a second look. So that if you include multiple heads in a pack, well, if you interchange them, like things like characters with helmets. This was done on the Voltron line, which uh, I worked on at Mattel. I was really excited about this because it's hard to do a helmetless head that a helmet can fit on without making the head kind of be like a pin head and sort of out of warped, out of shape. So doing two different heads is a great way around this. Marvel Legends also does an awesome job with just doing different expressions. Two different Captain America facial grimaces, I guess you could say. So, yes, you can do different facial expressions, and you can do helmetless heads. The third thing is you can do different characters. So a head, unlike an arm, unlike a sword, can indicate an entire different character. So a great example is this Nick Fury figure from Marvel Legends. Hey, I'm using a lot of, a lot of Hasbro examples today. Go Hasbro! So yeah, Nick Fury comes with alternate heads, but this isn't meant to make a different look for Nick Fury. It's meant to make Dirk Anger and a generic shield guard or agent, So the, because the uh, bodysuit is the same for all of them. I mean, heck, when you have the same bodysuit, wow, what you can do with heads. I bet Hasbro was partying like it was 1999 when they found out in the Avengers movie every character was going to be in the same generic outfit for a core scene or a key scene. So look at how much you get just from heads here. It tells you who the character is. All right, and the last thing is you can do a head that's not intended for the figure, not intended for the character it comes with. So again, to use an example that I worked on because that helps me and my ego, Strobo came with a bunch of accessories, and one of them was an extra head, but this wasn't meant for him. Different uh, uh, skin color, different uh, look. So why include this? Well, it went with another character that was previously released, happened to be related to Strobo, but it was Zodak. Uh, that's Zodak with a K on the right there. So, But you can see how he was pretty much a straight repaint, especially with the face, the head, of the original Zodak with a C. And I always wanted to do the helmetless look to give him a unique look, since the other head was, was just a repaint. So here was a way to include that by including it with Strobo, but it was meant for Zodak. Marvel and or Hasbro Legends with Marvel Hasbro Legends Hasbro comma with Marvel Legends is now also doing this a lot and again I really applaud it it's including heads or well I guess Silvermane that's just like a head on a uh, vehicle but uh, you know Ro uh, Mystique came with a uh, the, you know Lilandra head and and, and uh, Professor X with the Shadow King and Gwen Stacy came with Mary Jane's head so. Having heads that aren't intended for that figure is really cool. Now, granted, you could pop Mary Jane's head onto Gwen Stacy's body there, and it worked to some degree, but that particular look with that color of skirt and the green jacket, that's kind of Gwen Stacy's look. And I'm sure there are people out there to have both characters immediately, but I will say uh, Model Behavior, a YouTube channel uh, I'm a fan of, showed a great look that I've now copied, so props to him. They that allowed me to use that new Mary Jane head to make a figure that looks more like she's dressed as Mary Jane and less that she's just Gwen Stacy with Mary Jane's head. And I know that there was a Marvel Legends Mary Jane figure that was released with a Spider-Man with that glowing green glow. I missed it. I never picked it up. I regret it, but I don't have this figure. And if I'm going to have a Mary Jane in my collection, well, while I don't have that figure and it costs big bucks on eBay these days, I do happen to have a second floating head of Mary Jane that came with Gwen Stacy. And while I did buy a second one and pop that head on, made green jacket Mary Jane, as suggested by Model Behavior, the Moira Metagart figure, recently released by Marvel Legends in their X-Men line, well, comes with a lot of parts for customization. You can do two very unique looks with her. And again, I really applaud Hasbro with the whole removable arms with the jacket, the lab coat. They also did this with Reed Richards in the Fantastic Four. Really, really cool way of customizing figures without uh, breaking the bank. All right, so that Moira Metagart body, if you pop on the non-lab coat arms, pop on Mary Jane's head from the Gwen Stacy pack, and bam, now you have a much better Mary Jane that doesn't just look like Mary Jane with Gwen Stacy's head attached, which, again, I know there will pe be people excited for that, but... I think we can take that Mary Jane, Gwen Stacy amalgam figure now out of my collection because I can replace it with a Moira Metagart body. And again, I know some people will be disappointed with that, but I think this is a better figure and it's a good use of that head. All right, 
So where am I going with all of this? What does all of this mean? The point is, is that heads with action figures do more than any other body part and any other possible accessory to make a figure unique. And not to harp too much on Mary Jane, but hey, while we're on the subject of Mary Jane and she works as an example, so this that version that I never picked up, well, lo and behold, that head also showed up on uh, <laughs> Natalia Romanoff is a Black Widow in the retro line. So interesting how Mary Jane has this like weird thing going on where her head gets reused for other figures, and then you could take her extra head and put it on a different body and make a different one. But it just shows, this This image right here proves the power of the action figure head and the unlimited potential it has. It does more than any other parts, and when costs are being reduced and you have to remove things from a figure, paint or accessories, my advice for toy brand managers, don't cut the head. Because as much as we all love Madame Guillotine, heads bring so much more value. And if you can include a second head, that can pay off long-term collections, like with uh, that Strobo Zodak connection, the Mary Jane figure, and frankly, I already have a bag of weapons, so if I want to get the character another gun, I have many to choose from. Heads are really important, and they shouldn't be underestimated, and anytime an extra one can be included, I think it's a fantastic idea. I hope you enjoyed this video, and it was uh, some good insight into the toy industry. Let me know uh, any comments you have. What extra heads or combinations have you found that works really well? And we still haven't even talked about universal neck pegs. That's a whole other thing. Thanks for sharing this video with others, watching, commenting, and uh, all the other algorithm stuff. It's so much appreciated. See you in the next video.